final expense coach. And, you know, this is one of our first Facebook Lives uh, interviews with Mr. Cody Askins, uh, the owner of Secure Agent Mentor. And I wanted to get him on here because I just wanted to really get, you know, just his point of view. I mean, he's been doing this for a while and I'll let him tell his story, but you know, it's, it's all about bringing value to this industry. And one thing that I feel like this, you know, the insurance industry is just kind of lacking is just proper training in this industry. And, you know, uh, you know, Cody's a a guy that has 650 videos on YouTube (laughs) and, you know, I'm a kind of guy that's fallen in his footsteps and I just wanted to get him on here today and you guys kind of listen in and, as you know, viewers are hopping in here, you know, we'll be able to take some, uh, you know, some Q and a later, but you know, we want to talk about, you know, just the industry and you know, why people are failing and you know, what it takes not to fail. But you know, Cody, if you can, man, if you can give us a, uh, you know, a little short synopsis of, yeah. uh, you know, your story, you starting in the industry and kind of what's going on with you now. Absolutely, buddy. Hey, thank you so much, Sean. Appreciate you having me on. Appreciate the group for allowing me to do this, man. I'm excited. Uh, a little quick background really quick because I know that's not, not, not what everybody came here to hear, you know. So um, I've been in the business since I was 19. Uh, started out uh, with Mutual Omaha. Uh, I was in college playing basketball. I got a, I became obsessed with the business. Uh, was fortunate enough to make 117 grand in my first eight months in the business. And ever since then, man, I'm just, I love it. I eat it up, you know. Uh, yeah. And so now, uh, you know, m- moved along. I'm not necessarily you know captive or career anymore but uh dude just just always loved life insurance final expense and and here we are in the final expense coach group man absolutely and one thing i want all you guys who are watching this right now there is nothing scripted about these videos in this interview this is completely raw all this is just right off the dome and i want you guys to understand that because when you do this at a high level and you know your business upside and down, especially as any owner, you need to know everything about your business. And when you know it, it you don't have to script anything. You just know how to deliver. So, yeah, you know, kind of kind of hop into this, Cody, you know, because we got some more viewers hopping in here. And uh, as for some of you viewers hopping in here, shoot us some thumbs up, you know, give us some likes and, uh, you know, go check us out, you know, as we go ahead and, you know, cover this about, you know, so when it comes to this industry and, you know, we wanted to talk about, you know, how not to fail, Cody. You know, why do you think 92% of agents in this industry fail? And then I'll give you my little two cents on what you said. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of it comes down to a, a, a system of some sort. You know, um, everybody's system's different. But I believe that what I learned at 19 was, hey, for me to succeed and for me to hit my goal, of making 100K, winning a trip, like I knew I needed to see 10 people. And we all talk about different numbers. And you know what? Everybody can have their own number. But the key is we got to know what to do. So I'm big in, hey, set 15 seats, sit with 10 and you'll close five plus. And so that, that yeah, that varies. Like some agents want to sit with 20, 30, 40. That's even better. But if every agent we know, no matter how great or how skilled they are, how much the insurance experience they have, how much sales experience they have, it doesn't matter if they sat and yeah. presented and built value and asked 10 people to buy every single week you know they would not fail. No, there's no question about it. I mean, when it comes to agents in this industry, I mean, they they have to have a system. They have to have a sales process. I mean, you can't just go through a presentation. I mean, if you think from beginning to very end of the presentation of building rapport, you know, qualifying the client, you know, finding the coverage and finding the right company form, receiving the banking account information. I mean, there's a lot of steps to that process. And, you know, depending on where you are in your career, you know, uh, depending on your skill sets, you know, you know, sometimes when your your presentation's kind of jumpy or it's kind of all over the place, it's not seamless. And when you can kind of make your presentation just completely natural at the tip of the tongue and just kind of make it, you know, smooth transition, you kind of find yourself, you know, uh, you know, closing more business. And that's one thing I feel like a lot of agents within this industry, even within this this group right now watching, are just not getting the type of training that they need. I mean, it's just yeah. that simple. Yeah. So I mean. You know, uh, you know, you know, to give you another question, you know, because we're going to, we got a lot of viewers on here already, but you know, for any new agent getting started, you know, uh, in this industry, what would you advise them and what kind of steps would you tell them to take place, you know, at the beginning of their career so they can set themselves up for success? Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a great question because you've got, even in this group, right. You've got people from tons of different companies. You've got everything going on, you know, so, uh, I would say 
Find someone to learn from. Find a mentor. Find a Sean Fogelson, man. Get plug into a group and then get better every single day. I'm big on having goals, staying focused. I write down my goals every morning and every night. I'm big on goals. I'm big on waking up and being focused and being conscious of what I want to accomplish all day. So if someone has goals and they are serious about improving and actually succeeding and actually making it, then you'll naturally want to improve. You'll naturally want to make that additional call. Like successful agents do what unsuccessful agents are unwilling to do. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I can't think about how many times where it was later in the evening, you know, I had a couple clients, maybe no show me. I got a, you know, a 530 exactly. appointment and, you know, I could easily have just packed it up and gone home, yeah. you know, but I just knew that if I went out there, even though I didn't want to, you know, a lot of those times, those appointments that I never went to or that I didn't want to go to, yeah. I would sell those clients, you know, exactly. so, yeah, you know, yeah. so, so it kind of, you know, to kind of, you know, to go piggyback off what you're saying is that you're right. Is that a lot of agents, you know, they want this big money. They want to make a million dollars. They want to make a hundred grand, but they're not willing to do what it takes. And yeah. at the end of the day, you know, you have to have a mindset and this is a roller coaster of emotions, right? You know, one day you're on a high, the next day you're on a low and you got to find that even keel where even when you're running hot, you just got to be able to press forward because when you got momentum behind you, you just yeah. don't take the foot off the pedal because what, what they say, what's the best time to make, uh, to make, uh, to make the next sale It's right after you made one. Exactly. When you're hot, man. And it's, it's true. When you're, when you're, when you're, when you're like, when you're in a hot streak, man, you just can't miss. Everyone is a buyer, right? But then when things are struggling, we've, we've got we got an agent in our office that came to me, you know, was asking some questions, you know, and, and struggling. And he's like, dude, what am I doing wrong? I, you know, when that stuff happens, it feels like you can't throw a beach ball in the ocean. And so staying focused and staying serious, like if you know that having a call night every week will help you, then freaking do it. If you know a Saturday morning call session will help you, then freaking do it. If you know door knocking the neighbors, if you know asking one more time, if you know all these things will help, then freaking do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth, man. And I mean, you know, I, I just don't understand. I have agents that constantly call me up and they ask me questions. But when I give them information to go utilize, I mean, you know, a lot of agents won't even take the time to go on the carrier websites. Exactly. You know, we're, we're a 1099, you guys. You know, the idea about what we do is that we are in business for ourselves. Now, even though we might be working for a particular company, if you are 1099 and not a captive agent, you are need to be running a business structure. And the idea of what, what we do is you got to put the time, you got to put the effort. I try to talk about people opening up a restaurant. You know, let's just say we're talking about something outside of this industry. If you yeah. open up a restaurant and let's just say you spend a hundred grand, I mean, you got to buy it. You know, you got to buy the grease. You got to buy the pans. You got to buy the inventory. I mean, you got to invest in your business. And then for people who are financially tight, what would you say that they need to invest in their time? You exactly. have to invest time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those that separate themselves are the ones that, Dude, they, in, like you just said, they invest in your business. I mean, my business started to grow when I started having call nights, bringing college kids over because I, I was in college playing basketball. I, I was 19. I didn't have a lot of time. So yeah. I had to get creative. Once I started investing in my business, spending money. I mean, the most successful agents in the country are on a weekly lead program and they're spending money every single week. And so, dude, investing in your business, taking it seriously, running it like a business, buying the grease, buying the pans, you know, hiring the people, dude, that's just yep. part of it. Yep, it is. And I mean, the thing is that when you see the agents that are out there really being successful and for all you people that are watching this right now, you have to understand is that the ones that are actually successful is exactly what Cody said. They're on an actual lead program. I don't care whether you've been doing this for 20 years is that, you know, at that point, you better have a book of business of thousands of people to be able to write at a high level. And if you don't have that and you're brand new in this industry, you got to start somewhere and you got to have something that is getting you prospects and be able to get you across the table from Mr. And Mrs. Johnson. Because if we ain't sitting in front of people, guess what? We're unemployed. Yeah. I mean, it's just that simple. You know, a lot of agents, they like these office atmospheres where they kind of go to the office and they make dials and they might make 20 or 30 and then they get a couple, you know, a bunch of no's and then they're ready to say, you know what, I'm done for the day. You know, I worked hard. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. We, 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 it's funny you say that. We have a canvas in our office that says <laughs> without leads, agents are unemployed. And I'm a big believer in that. Like 
we both say all the time on videos, 92% of agents fail. I bet 90% of agents aren't on a weekly lead program. They're not on a predictable system that produces so many set, so many leads, so many set appointments, so many run appointments, so many apps, so much revenue. The agents I talk to that are on a weekly lead program and they're consistent because we've got another campus in the office that says weekly consistency equals insurance success. The agents that are successful, they're putting up 100K, 200K, 300K, 400K, half a million. I even heard another agent the other day that I wrote like 750K last year or whatever. They are consistent week in and week out because life happens. If we have a bad day, we have a bad week, we have a bad month. Before you know it, like you buy you buy leads and then you, you don't buy any leads for like three or four weeks. Oh, I'm in a drought. Like what's going on? Buy more leads than you need. You know what I mean? Just invest. And think of it as a business that must run a proper way week in and week out. There's no question about it. I mean, in the one word you just said, there, a player in the world. So the thing is that, you know, talent is important. You know, not everybody has the gift of gab. But the thing is that I've seen plenty of agents that I've actually hired and recruited, Cody. And I don't know if you've done this where some of you guys are kind of like picking like, hey, he's going to be a rock star and you might kind of be a little judgmental. And the funny thing is that some of the people that I think are going to be the rock stars and the people that I think might not be successful, it's the complete opposite. You exactly. just never know what you're going to be dealing with because at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, work ethic and not to mention having heart and will because – you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have it in you to go out there on the days you don't want to, you will never reach the true potential that you could become. And the idea is that we get our license and become a licensed, you know, you know, a licensed official within the whatever state that yeah. you get, you know, get contracted. It's just, uh, it just blows my mind that people are just so willing to give up so quickly. And, you know, to tell you guys a little about my story is that my first year in this industry was nothing like Cody. I, I, I failed. But the difference, the difference was, is that I didn't quit. And the thing is that there's plenty of other agents out there that are going through the same things that I went through. And all you really do need is a mentor. And that was one thing that really helped me is when I had somebody that, you know, Cody, that I could look up to that knew this business that could point me in the right direction. And then once I was able to kind of get, you know, you know, get things rolling, you know, it was just every day I was just getting better and better and better. And, and even you, Cody, we, we never stopped learning, do it. I mean, it's just, no, a never, no. it's a not ever, it's a non, it's an ever ongoing thing. You know, you never stop growing. You can't man. As soon as you do, like you're either expanding or contracting. And as soon as you stop growing, as soon as you stop expanding, someone's going to pass you. Like I say this all the time on videos. Complacency is my biggest fear. I don't want to get complacent. I don't want, you know, whatever I'm doing, whatever my brand is, whatever your brand is, whatever I, the agent's brand is in this. Like as soon as you stop trying to grow, as soon as you be, become complacent, somebody's going to pass you like things are not going to go well. And so always expanding and always having that mindset of what can we do to grow is huge. Cause I, nobody wants to be passed. Nobody wants to be, you know, nobody wants to be shown up, you know? Well, as long as you're a true competitor, I mean, hell Cody, I hate losing in video games. I mean, so, yeah. you know, it, when it comes to anything, I don't like losing, you know, I mean, I, I play college soccer. You said you played uh, basketball, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I think a lot of things with a lot of, you know, a lot of agents that work in this industry that come from a sports background tend to do really well with this because, you know, when you have a leaderboard and you see your name and it's at that bottom of the list, I mean, you ain't feeling too good about yourself, are you? So, you know, yeah. you got to step your game up and you got to take yourself to the next level. And, you know, one reason why I wanted to get Cody on here, you guys, that, you know, for everyone who's watching is that I just really wanted y'all get a different perspective. You know, somebody who's, who's been there and done it and who's constantly growing right now. And, you know, uh, you guys hear me all the time and I'd rather you guys hear somebody else for once. And, you know, and Cody's you a, you know, a yeah, and Cody, Cody's a, you know, a great role model for a lot of people in this business. And, you know, for anybody that's really, you know, trying to take their business. I mean, hop on the YouTube, watch these videos. I mean, they're extremely helpful, but you Thanks, know, bro. I mean, Cody, when, when it comes to you and, you know, uh, I, I know I asked you a question about, you know, uh, you know, for a new agent to, you know, what's the best thing that they can do about getting started. But when it comes to an agent who's been doing this for a little while, you know, what really gives, you know, any agent really an edge, you know, what, what gives them that, you know, that, that next level where they're able to kind of separate themselves from some of these other agents. I know you kind of hit on some of those things, but if you had yeah. anything else to kind of add on to that, you know, please do. Yeah. I mean, everyone's, I mean, it's cliche. Everyone's got their own, their own why, their own purpose, their own motivation, yep. their own focus. And so 
whatever it is for you that can keep you focused on the task at hand, I think that's huge because if we lose focus, like we said earlier, when we lose focus, life happens. Like an entire month or quarter can go by and we're like, crap, where did it go? So the more focused we are, the more conscious of what's going on, the more we're in tune with our numbers and our business and we have goals and we're focused on expansion, yep. the better. Because like you said, man, it's, but this business, it's so many agents fail. And a lot of the times it's just because they don't know what to do. They don't know when to do it. And then because they don't know what to do and when to do it, they don't do anything. Doing something is better than nothing. Like when I started out, I didn't have any money. I had to, and I worked for a, I worked for a captive career company. I didn't know, you know, how the independent side worked. I didn't know how leads work. I didn't know all these things. So literally I would have cold calling call night sessions and pay college kids to come set appointments for me. I would also door knock like section eight and senior housings all around the area because I knew I had to sit with 10 people. I don't have any money. I can't fit. I can't find a system. So I'd get creative and think outside the box and sit and ask 10 people to buy every single week. I didn't always know where they were going to come from. I just knew that they had to happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I try to, I mean, one thing I'm huge on for any agent uh, and let me get your kind of opinion on this is that for somebody who just starts in the business and let's just say they, you know, whatever leads or whatever company that they're at and they go ahead and purchase some leads, you know, what is your concept? Do you say that, Hey, go ahead, Cody, and start, you know, getting on that phone and dialing, or do you ever advise your agents to go, you know, go, go door knock, go take these yeah. leads and go ahead to that door. And, you know, once you get good at door knocking, you know, the rest of your business will start getting better and better. And that means you being, you know, more efficient over the phone because not everybody's got that, you know, that I guess uh, I'm, I don't want to use the word swag, but uh, you know, not everyone's got that, you know, spontaneity about themselves where they can just get on the phone and be able to land appointments right from the get go. Uh, and, and it does come down to the leads and the quality of them. But for any agent that are starting, you know, have you ever told one of your agents, Hey, you know, go out there and door knock them and yes. see how that works. And, you know, maybe later on start making those dials. I mean, you know how, you know, yeah. when it comes to you about, I have all different types of ideas about setting agents up, but when it comes to you, I mean, you know, how's that, you know, how's that, you know, come down to you? Well, a lot of agents are scared of the phone. Maybe they're not skilled on the phone. Maybe they're not talented on the phone. Maybe they don't know what to do. Maybe they don't, when someone says, Hey, I'm not interested, they may believe them when, you know, 99% of what they're saying is that they don't mean it. It's just a rebuttal. It's just off the cuff. They're just, they're just selling them on why they don't want their help. Exactly. And so some agents, if, 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 if you're not comfortable there, then don't door knock. Like the goal of getting leads is to get in front of them. It doesn't mean that you have to do one, this one thing or that one thing or only email or only text or only call or only door knock. Do them all, you know, yeah. just get in front of them. And if, if you're not comfortable on the phone, get in MapQuest Route Planner, you know, put together a route and just go door knock them all two, three, four times a day for a week. And before you know it, I guarantee you'll see 10 people, right? I mean, Absolutely. it doesn't matter. You just got to see them. Yep. I mean, and at the end of the day, like you said before, I mean, you got to see – I mean, for agents that are starting, I mean, you got to see, sit down with 10 people and it's easier said than done. I mean, yeah. you got to put the effort in. And, you know, when I look at this industry and I look at the best agents that are producing on a high level, Cody, they're doing a combination of all of them. They're not yeah. just saying, Hey, I'm just a door knocker or they don't just say, I just schedule appointments. They do it all. Uh, well, that my mic fell down, <laughs> but you know, as you know, as for, you know, there's times where, you know, when I'm out in the field and you know, you get no showed, you know, are you going to go drive to the gas station and pull out your phone and play on Facebook? Or are you going to go maximize your time while you're out there in the field and go out there and do some door knocks and set up a big day tomorrow? That yeah. was my biggest concept, Cody, is that, you know, when there's those days, because, you know, you always have those lulls. There's always that one day out of the week where it's very slow, you know, unless you just are a, a machine. Sure. And those days that were really slow, I, I would make sure that I would get in my car. I'd spend 20 bucks in gas. I'd punch in my road warrior, which is kind of like you're talking about your route planner. And yeah. I would just go door knock every single house that day. And then by the time I got home, I'd have five, six appointments for the next day, you exactly. know, just by getting my face out there and introducing myself, letting them know who to handle their case. And is that your name on the card, Cody? Oh, it is. Well, I got that important information for you. It only takes about five to 10 minutes to go over. And I got all these other families I got to see in the area. And I'm going to be back tomorrow. What's the best time I can see you more of a morning or afternoon person. I love that, dude. That simple. That's good, man. Because and, and you could have chose to do nothing. You had no appointments. It was a slow day. You could have went and you know picked up the kids. You could have went home and watched 
Netflix. You could have, yeah. you know, you could have <laughs> made two calls and got some coffee. Like you chose to do something and take some action to improve your business. 90, 95% of agents wouldn't have done that. It is. I mean, it's uh, I mean, and a lot of agents just don't want to go ahead and do, I feel like some of the agents out there, like they truly feel like they're just too good for it. Yeah. You know, I'm too good to do this, Cody. You know, I, you know, do you know my background? I don't, you know, exactly. and day when I, I don't give a damn about your background. It's about living now. And you got, the thing is for any of y'all agents out there is that usually the first year is the toughest, but the thing is, once you make it past the first year is that you have all the momentum behind you. Now you have residuals coming in. Now you have those, you know, you have, uh, you know, your tail end of your money hitting, especially on the 15th month, you have your first, second and third month all hitting at one time. I mean, that's when you start really building up your cash flow. So for any agent out there, all I can really advise and, you know, Cody can mention his thought is that you have to stick it through. You just can't give up. The ones that succeed are the ones that never quit. And, yeah. you know, that's just the bottom line. And that goes for anything that out there. I mean, I think about celebrities who were living in their car and now they're worth $50 million. You know, they just never gave up on their dream. And, and you know, apparently you never did either. No, exactly. I, I, I've seen veteran agents that weren't great at sales, but after 20 years, you know, dude, they're making a quarter million dollars a year. They're making a half million dollars a year. And they were average agents. They were making 30, 40, 50 grand a year, whatever, for a long time. And they just grew their business before you know it. They're getting referrals. Like they just didn't quit. They just, and, and I'm not saying that's how I want to grow my business. And I know that's not how you're going to want to, want to grow your business, but they didn't give up. No, there's no question. I mean, so, uh, to have a couple questions, if you guys have any questions out there, a little Q and a for y'all. Uh, but you know, while we got Cody on the line, I like to, you know, get some of y'all's input. Uh, when it comes to uh, someone's asking your door knock, you cannot map out 26 stops on <laughs> map quest. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you can. I mean, ask for anybody, if you guys want a really good app to use, there's yeah. called, a, it's called road warrior. Uh, you can go ahead and pay. It's like five 99 for the month and you can put unlimited addresses in there. And you can go out there and door knock as many people. You can pick the shortest route, whatever it may be, just like a normal GPS locator. You can take, uh, if you want to miss tolls or you want to, you know, have the shortest distance or the shortest drive, you can punch that in there and it's going to save you gas because I can't tell you how many times that before I got this app, Cody, I'd be door knocking homes out there. I'd have my leads with me and then I would drive 30 minutes up the road to go door knock. And then I punch in my next address and I was just right up the road from right before I came from. Exactly. So, you know, just wasting time, wasting money. So, uh, you that's know, good, man. that's awesome. I'd never heard of that, but that's, that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. Road warrior. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a cool. great app. So, uh, as for, you know, you know, when it comes to an agent and, uh, you know, obviously we talk about leads, leads are extremely important in this business, but you know, for agents that really aren't, you know, financially stable, who can even purchase a hundred or two hundred dollars worth of leads, have you done? Have you done any type of uh, you know gone to any like assisted living homes? Have you done any type of webinar or I mean seminars within those people? You know what did you always do? I mean, would you just go at door knock random na neighborhoods like you said? I've done that too. I've done that too. One thing I did when I, when I didn't have a lot of money is again I had to get creative. So I would have call nights. I'd bring over like three, four, five college kids. I'd I'd give them you know I'd buy them pizza, give them a script, a phone, a, a cubicle. Tell them to you know read the scripts at appointments. I'd, I'd get all jacked up and motivate them and run around and get excited. Uh, I'd pay them like 10, 20 bucks an appointment. You know, before I knew it, I'd spend 100 bucks, 200 bucks, or whatever, and have like 15, 20 appointments done at the, at the end of the night. A lot of them would stand me up, but hey, it was activity. Another thing I would do is I would door knock in, in Missouri. There's a lot of, especially around Springfield, there's a lot of senior housing. Um, and it's like four units, four seniors living in a home. Uh, they're, you know, living in a building and it's, uh, 55 plus 60 plus, uh, we've got some around here that have as many as like 120 individuals that are 55 plus living in this huge complex. Yeah. And when you get rural, like they don't, they don't care if you solicit, you know, I've been kicked out of a lot of places in Springfield, but when you get outside of there, dude, I would spend, I wrote, you know, I wrote, I wrote six apps in one day, uh, in one afternoon slash evening, cold door knocking, random people. Really? Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I always tell my agents, if you ain't getting the cops called on, you ain't working hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Oh man, well, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, and this is on a this is on a different, uh, you know, concept about you know about why agents fail. But you know, when it comes in your experience, you worked at a captive agency. Yeah. 
Now, when it comes to being captive and non-captive, and a lot of agents out there just, you know, you know, uneducated, they just don't know about this. But could sure. you give your two cents on this? Because this is something that I really try to highlight a lot of times when I'm trying to educate the group or, you know, just talk to my agents in general about the opportunity being from independent to being actually in a captive agency and what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, I'm not someone to, you know, talk negatively about a bunch of companies in general. I'm really not. We're not but talking companies. We're just talking cap. No, I know. I know. Okay. But in general, I want to say like, you know what? Um, when I was with this, with, with, with mutual, for example, yeah. like, dude, I drank the freaking Kool-Aid. Like I didn't even know any better. I was so focused. I was so tunnel vision. Like you could have told me, Hey dude, I can offer you a hundred and a thousand percent. I just said, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I got to hit my goal. Like, I don't care, you know, but at the end of the day, you want to build a business that is for you, is for your family. You want to build a legacy. You want to, you want to grow something for you. You don't want to grow something for other people. So I think being vested from day one, this isn't a recruiting pitch. It's just important. You know, it's just advice. It's just, it's real though. I mean, it's, everyone needs to know that. No, of course. I mean, I mean, and there's a, I mean, I tell anybody, there's a lot of great opportunities in this industry. There's not just one, you know, Oh, you know, dude, there's thousands. I mean, there's thousands of opportunities. So, you know, for anybody that's getting into this industry or even on this group that maybe just started, I mean, do your homework. Don't just listen to the person that recruited you. Do some, find out some other people that are working in that organization and see how they're doing. You know, exactly. I've been to, you know, I've been to conventions where I was a top pro producer and I was in a, in a captive organization and I was making literally 35% commissions on free leads. And, when I got up on stage and I, you know, I won some, you know, I won some money and, you know, I, you know, got a little plaque and all this, I was looking around Cody and I was just like, man, I don't make much money. And then I'm looking around yeah. and everybody clapping for me and I'm like, how much do y'all make, you know? So, right. you know, the thing is, is that, you know, I, you know, it's important. You got to look at not only just, you know, not being, you know, independent where you can actually, you know, run your own business, but, being to have multiple products that can really benefit the client and not being one dimensional in that sake, because a lot of captive organizations have their own particular product, right, Cody? And you, right. you normally see about a 25 to 35% increase in those rates. And I could be off, but that's just kind of a guesstimate. Well, no, uh, yeah. Like, like with mutual specifically, um, we didn't have access to the living promise. That was a broker only product. Like brokers don't have access to the mutual guaranteed issue, you know? Yep. What's funny is when I sold final expense back then, I was on a 35% commission level. Yeah, I got some small bonuses and yeah, I sold some term and other stuff to get to where I made 120 grand. But I couldn't sell a simplified issue product unless they bought at least 20K of coverage. I didn't know any better. Yeah, I was selling people a guaranteed issue that didn't even need it. I didn't know any better. I was just focused. It was the only, only opportunity I had. It was the only option I had. You know, and I look back now and I'm like, dang, what if I would have had other options? What if I would have actually been competitive? What if I'd have actually been vested, you know? So, well, you know, I mean, when you're not vested day one, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stipulations with these companies and I'm not trying to trash talk anybody, Cody. What I'm no, trying no, to no. do is we're trying to bring awareness. We want, we, you know, the idea of this group is to bring value and educate yeah. agents because the thing is, like I said before, is that there is a, a lack of training, proper training within this industry why and one of the reasons why 92% of agents truly fail yeah. is because they don't have somebody who can lead them that can actually show them and really, you know, mentor them and engage them and role play with them and do all the things yeah. above that a top manager that would do, you know? So, you know, you got to lead by the front and when you don't have per se a manager who can do that, or at least educate you on the products, you're really going to struggle out there. And unless you're somebody who's really hardcore driven, you know, kind of like me, you know, and you is that, you know, they're going to, they're going to start getting a bad taste in their mouth. And what happens is they typically leave the industry and they have nothing positive to say about it, which is, which is unfortunate because those individuals, sometimes they're just linked with the wrong company. And if they actually had a different opportunity, they could be, you know, a rock star. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of really awesome agents out there that all you're doing is bringing awareness to something that they need to know. Like you're bringing value and making, you're doing them a favor by bringing this up. You really are. Yeah. Cause I mean, I just, I, you know, a lot of agents, they got to wait a year, two years, five years, sometimes 10 years to get vested. 10 back then. 10. Yeah. No, mine was, uh, mine was seven years. So, uh, once I caught a glimpse of that, I actually read more in the contract ever. I started educating myself 
And, you know, I can tell anybody that, you know, who's watching this video, you know, who's trying to educate themselves, they're trying to get themselves, you know, to, to, to grow is that the more you get involved and the better you get at this, the more you're going to learn and you're going to start understanding that, Hey, I'm being taken advantage of. Yep. Hey, I need to maybe look somewhere else because I truly feel this way is that 90% of agents who end up becoming successful, 90% of them who started with their first company tend not to end in that company. They end up somewhere else. Because I, I, what's, something I want, I, I'll bring it up real quick. Yeah. When any agents that I meet, you can name, you can name any company, local offices, whatever you can go to around to some local life and health company, you know, captive shops or whatever, even in your area you won't find someone making quarter million dollars a year, half a million dollars a year, even normally a hundred grand as a producer in those offices. And so there's just no one for those new agents to look up to. Like there's no one for them to learn from, you know, there maybe some, maybe some managers or some corporate individuals, you know, but it's just, it just doesn't exist. Like it just doesn't. And even those, if, if they are like, even back when I had vets at mutual back when I was there, uh, they sold a lot of other carriers and products outside of that company. Well, I mean, in some cases, I mean, I, I try to tell agents in general, and it's not me trying to recruit them. It's not me trying to put, you know, put some little deploy on It's It's simply, you know, if you wear a size 11 shoe, you know, you're not going to fit in a size nine, you know? So it goes the same thing with our business is that one product does not fit all. And the thing 100%. is that you have to have multiple products that cater to, to the client's age, their health to make sure that they get the best plan out there. And why being a 1099 contractor and not being in a captive agency is that you have the ability to have those products and do a good service. And while doing a good service, getting paid phenomenal. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, you know, uh, what other questions we have out there, you guys, uh, I'm have one little question for you uh, on the, on the secure agent mentor side is that are your telemarketing, uh, your Facebook leads, are they income, uh, the income bracket where they have a, you know, a, you know, decipher of 20,000 to 50,000 or, you know, an income bracket where you're actually the, you know, when you're finding those leads. Yeah, we do some of that, uh, from time to time. We've noticed that it isn't as accurate as people would think. So, right. okay. Well, that was one question. And, uh, Great as for you guys, we got a couple more minutes. We'll finish this up, uh, for any Q and A's, if you guys have any questions out there, Please shoot those up so I can go ahead and ask Cody while I'm on the I line. Think, yeah, there was a Mr. Edgar that said, "Hey, you know, being captives means you're being you're with one company, right? You know, I'm sorry, I'm new to the game. No, dude, don't apologize. You're you're exactly right. That's a it's a great question. And yes, the answer is yes. So, yes, uh, you when you're when you're on a captive, uh, you know, agency, you're you're really putting yourself in a, a one dimensional you know process where you know you can make money. And there's plenty of agents that do phenomenal in captive agencies. But the thing is that. If you took those agents, those ones that are the rock stars in that, in that type of environment, and I yeah. go ahead and I put them over in, in, in a different situation that they're not captive, higher commission levels, different lead structure, more products, these individuals only excel more. So, you know, for anybody that is, you know, you know, within, you know, a captive agency, you know, you can succeed. I'm just saying that if you are in a, in a non-captive agency, I said you, the ability to actually succeed is much more. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, keep the questions coming. <laughs> That's what somebody said. Uh, but, uh, you know, anything else, you know, when it, you know, to kind of do a little circle, a little recap, you know, you know, you guys, when it comes to, you know, agents failing and why we wanted to get on here and why, you know, what it takes not to fail. I mean, there's a couple key concepts, what it really truly takes to be successful. One is to, to be prepared preparation, you know, yeah. To make sure you have your applications with you when you show up at the house. You know, I've done that before. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I sold quite a few apps that week. I show up at the house. I had a hundred thirty-two dollar premium. I could have closed. Guess what? I didn't have the application. Oh, you know. So there's just little things that we need to be doing and preparing ourselves because if you're not pre if you're not preparing, you're preparing for failure. And that's yeah. why I said about you know agents plugging into their carriers, getting on the you know the carrier websites. I mean, they have. You know, they have, uh, you know, webinars teaching you about the products. You know, agents want to call me about product knowledge and I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty thorough on it, but I'm not going to know more than the underwriter at Mutual Omaha is, you know, sure. I'm not going to know that, you know, more than the, the underwriter at United, you know, United Home Life. Yeah. You know, you got to plug in, you got to be a business owner like we uh, discussed. Hey, Go ahead. On that note, you mentioned something really, really crucial. 
a lot of agents, especially when they're new, they want to know everything before they do anything. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in, Hey, just do, just take action, get in front of people. You'll figure it out on the fly. You'll learn, you know, so a lot of agents, you don't have to know everything. Like there's ins and outs of policies that I don't even know, you know, but at the end of the day, my job is to see people, help people earn a living. And if I'm worried about studying brochures and learning everything for weeks on weeks while I'm new, I'm going to fail because I'm never going to make any sales. So just well, get out there and take action and do it. It's uncomfortable, but just do it. No, you're right. I mean, you know, for me, when I was talking about when I failed my first year, you know what, you know how many appointments I average on a week, maybe three to four sit downs. So the concept where, you know, where you're going with this is that the more people you get in front of, the more mistakes that you make at the beginning of the career, the quicker you're going to be able to learn and grow. And the thing is that, you know, when you make these little mistakes and you leave that house and you're driving home, you know, I would sit there and I'd be like, I would be recapping the whole thing in my head. I'm like, what could I said different, Cody? How could I said this and delivered and how to, how I could overcome that objection. And I had a mentor that I was, you know, that I'm still friends with and we would talk and we would just bounce ideas off. Hey, what do we said this? What do we said this? And then we started implementing within our presentation and then you started seeing results. So, yeah. you know, for any agent out there that is struggling and, you know, I'm sure Cody does the same thing. I have agents call me up and, uh, you know, they'll be in the home and I will put me on the speakerphone. I'm yeah. like a 3D hologram sitting beside them <laughs> and I'll really sell the policy like that. And you know what? After about two weeks of them working with me, I've t I, I put money in their pocket. I showed them how to overcome certain objections. And after two weeks, they don't got to call me no more because they know how to run a real business. So, you know, if you're not having a manager that's actively engaging you is that a manager is supposed to, he's making, he's making money on you. He's yeah. got to be earning it. And if he's just sitting out there with his hands out, you know, hey, go out there and make it happen. He's throwing you the wolves. You know, it's going to be a tough time being successful in this industry when you don't have anybody pointing you in a direction, someone who's saying, Hey, Cody, you made a mistake. This is what you need to work on because you don't really know what you are making mistakes. And the thing is, sometimes we think we're better than we really are. And we get in the house and I tell agents record, record your conversation, oh, record your absolutely. presentation, because when you go home and you play that, you're like, wow, I kind of stunk here. You know, I need to work on this. So that's stuff that I've always done and how I've gotten in the position where I'm at now. So, you know, because you care. That's because that's because you care. You're serious. You want to improve. You want to be better. Like if it doesn't bother you when you leave sales and you didn't make a sale and you're like, okay, was it them? Was it me? What could I have done differently? Like role playing with yourself in the car. Like if you don't think like that, I don't know what's wrong with you. Cause you, you ought to, like if you miss sales, I'm like, dang, what's going on? Like what, what did I do this morning? Did I eat something wrong? Did I have a bad day? Like am I, did I say something wrong? You know, what's going on? You know? So, yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I wake up five in the morning, six o'clock in the morning every day because I'm just excited to get to work. I'm excited to, you know, work on my business. And, you know, for all of you agents that are on here, you have, you know, you have an ability to take your business by the horns, you know, yeah. no matter where you are in your career, no matter your experience, no matter anything, uh, no matter your looks, it don't matter. You know, it's just, you got to get out there. You got to hit the pavement and you got to go see the people STP baby. That's so, right. See well, the people. Hey, uh, Andrew brings up a question uh, that I felt like was really good. He says, at what, what point is it good for a part-time agent with a full-time job to make the leap to full-time insurance? The answer is yesterday. <laughs> you can't succeed part-time. I'm not going to be the greatest agent in the world. I'm not going to win trips. I'm not going to change my life forever with a part-time mindset. I'm just not. No, nope, you get, you work part-time, you get part-time results. So, you know, the idea is that, you know, you know, it, it's scary. And, you know, Andrew, you know, it, it kind of, it gets you, it gets you nervous about, you know, taking that leap yeah. and, you know, you got to have a divine belief in you knowing that you have the, you have what it takes to be successful. And yeah. once you make that, once you make that leap and you commit everything that you have to it, there's no way you can fail. The only way you do fail and why a lot of the agents have failed in this industry is because they quit. Because they got, they ran, they ran into a roadblock. They ran into a challenge. And I've gotten to the point where, you know, anybody, if you're growing, Cody, you're always running to obstacles. But the difference is you find a way to go over it, go around it, go under it, or you go through it. And that's, yeah. that's what winners do is that they find a way. And that's what you got to ask yourself is that, am I really doing 
everything possible to be successful? Am I working as hard as I think I am? Because the idea is that when you're selling business and you know the average AP for final expense, and we'll finish this up in a second, is six hundred dollars annual premium, right? Well, sometimes you sell some big apps, right? You know, maybe mm-hmm. your goal is four grand for the week. Well, maybe by Tuesday you had two, three big applications, and you're almost at four thousand dollars. Does that mean to go ahead and take your foot off the pedal? Or does that mean to go ahead and press the pedal even harder? Because the idea is agents say, oh, I hit my 4,000 mark. You only close three applications. What if one of those pieces of business falls off the books? What does that do to your week? You've got to constantly be writing business. And even when you run into chargebacks, you just write through it and you go back to your client's houses and you try to do the cancellation letter and you try to save that business. Uh, But Anything hmm. else, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, we're going to have a lot more interviews between me and Cody. I, I appreciate you being on here, man. It was awesome. Just kind of getting you, your, your thought process and you over here giving some value to these agents because, you know, they always hear me. It's better for them to maybe hear somebody else like you. So, but uh, anything else you got, you maybe got one little, uh, you know, one little thing to say before you head out the door. Yeah, I would say uh, figure out what you want. Like everyone's in a different place in life. You know, some of us are, some, some of us are part-time. We got a full-time job, you know, and a lot of us are asking those type of questions because we're looking for a specific answer, which I think it's the answer we gave. So figure out what you want and go get it, do whatever it takes. Don't let anything get in your way. If your goal is to make hundred K set the goal, b- bar at hundred K work backwards, figure out what you need to do every single week. For that big goal to happen. Once you break it down and it becomes a small weekly goal of a couple grand or whatever, it doesn't seem so, oh, that, okay, you know what? That's only 400 bucks a weekday. You know, that's, that's like half a sell. So it's like, think about the big goal, figure out what you want, break it down weekly. How many people do you need to see to make four sales? Maybe it's eight, see eight people, figure out what you want, go do it and be consistent week in and week out. Absolutely. Well, Cody, man, we really appreciate you. The owner of Secure Agent Mentor. It was Thank a you, pleasure buddy. having you on here. And we'll have a lot more uh, conversations in the future. So you guys, we appreciate you hopping on here and we'll see you guys next time.